So this is a video that I've wanted to make for a long time. This is a review, a very, very long-term review of Shell Rotella T4 motor oil, 15W40, used for 80,000 miles in my motorcycle exclusively. And so if you'd like to hear what I have to say about this oil after that many miles, um, stay tuned. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So yeah, I'm just down for a ride here. It's hot in the Los Angeles area, uh, summertime. And so I'm sticking to the coast. This is the uh, Pacific Coast Highway, or what they call the PCH, often, uh, often referred to as CA1, or California 1. Pretty famous road uh, among motorcyclists. I've ridden most of it, but um, there are some sections I haven't done. Anywho, I have, as those who have watched my channel know, owned this 2012 Suzuki V-Strom. Gonna close this. You know, when I'm down by the ocean, there's something about the salt in the air that fogs up my windscreen like this, and the uh, pin lock makes no difference. I don't know if any of the rest of you who live near large bodies of salt water experience that same thing but uh, it's kind of annoying I've used Shell Rotella T4 cheap motor oil which is on the surface on the bottle intended for diesel engines and uh, I buy it at a big box retailer in a big five quart jug so I get two oil changes plus some out of every, um, actually not quite two, out of every bottle I buy. I buy it for, I've been buying it for around $13 a bottle for a long time. Um, now with oil prices where they are, Brent oil being as high as it is, although it's come down a little, I guess. I'm sure it's more. I actually haven't been shopping for it uh, during this price bike yet because I've ha had it in my garage. But, um, you know, this is not a Suzuki motor oil. It's not a Honda motor oil. It's not explicitly marked as a synthetic oil or even a synthetic blend. Um, but those of you who know my bike, my story, uh, know that I bought this used Suzuki V-Strom with about 2,300 miles on it. So it was almost brand new. And uh, now I've got a little over 82,000 miles on it. So in rough numbers, I've used Shell Rotella T4 15W40 for 80,000 miles with no other oil ever having been in this bike. Um, so, I'm getting some breakfast. I've got a lot of thoughts about this oil. It's cloudy here today, but it's uh, super comfortable, even with the mesh jacket on. Newport Fashion Island. It's just a mall like any other pretty fancy mall, but malls are malls, right? If you followed my trip across the country, palms, pines, and fishing lines, uh, you may have heard a few comments about uh, my, my joy of uh, malls and uh, big box retail. <laughs> the sarcasm is pretty, is about as thick as this fog. I'm gonna eat breakfast at Ruby's in Newport Beach. Not exactly a 1950s diner authentically, 
Um, but it's got the look and the music's great in there. I believe the first one was opened in 1982, so, you know, it really should be, rather than this style, maybe it should have like uh, Patrick Nagel, or Nagel, I don't know how you want to pronounce his name, paintings, but rubies. Oh, and uh, some of you have commented lately about my Phaedrus Was Here stickers. Let me turn this off. Um, if you watched Palms, Pines, and Fishing Lines, you saw this sticker there the entire time. Um, and a couple of you have reached out, actually quite a few of you have reached out, and asked me where you can get these. Uh, I actually have a limited number of these that I cut and uh, have made. They're a vinyl sticker and uh, they'll last a long time. Um, this one's got a lot of miles on it. Uh, I, I will sell these to you. They only come in this size, which is you know, roughly four inches wide. I don't know how tall that is. You know, two knuckles. And um, if you reach out to me on urbanmonktv.com through my contact form, I can send you one of these in uh, the U.S. And you know what? Even if you're not in the U.S., reach out to me. Let's talk about it. I'll figure it out. You know, maybe I got to charge a little more for mailing it or something. But uh, I sell them pretty cheap, 10 bucks. And in the U.S., that includes mailing it to you. Anyways, um, those of you who have read the book and taken the pill will understand what that is uh, and those of you who have not would say why the hell would i want one of those on my bike but uh you know hey if you want one hit me up so let's go eat Ruby's 50s diner, great swing music, uh, typical diner food, burgers, fries, eggs, pancakes for breakfast, that kind of thing. Good coffee. Enough of a plug for Ruby's. Um, no sort of deal going on here. So Rotella oil. Um, why do I use it and why have I used it exclusively? Well, one, uh, motorcycle oil, motorcycle branded oils are expensive, right? And so over the lifetime of owning a bike, um, maybe it's incrementally more money, but it adds up. And this stuff, you know, I get two oil changes, so essentially nearly 8,000 miles maybe out of a jug for $13. Again, the price is probably higher today, but I guess I'm hoping it goes back down to that price at some point in the future. Maybe inflation's here to stay. Um, it is a diesel oil, if you read the label on the front, but if you flip it around to the back, it is JASO, J-A-S-O, M-A-2 rated. And while my V-Strom is not asking for that particular rating all of the ratings that it is asking for uh, the Rotella T4 meets and exceeds them so fine and many of the other motorcycles that I've owned in the past and uh, my cafe racer um, which I affectionately call Mr. Corton you can read my book on that uh, book is available on urbanmonktv.com you can watch the build of that bike, but that uh, calls for MA2, Jasso MA2 rated oil, and so does the CX500. Um, many, many motorcycles, you know, this is, this is the rating that a lot of guys look for. So it has it, and it has always had it. Um, there's more I can say about this oil from a technical standpoint. I'm gonna wait till I'm back in my shop to do that. Uh, what I will say is that I do change my oil frequently, so if the manufacturer's uh, service manual and the regular recommended service interval is somewhere around like 4,000 miles, um, I do change it more frequently than that. I really go by feel of the transmission. 
Uh, when I put in fresh shell rotella, I can feel just smooth shifts. And when I start getting over maybe 3,500 miles with this oil, it just feels a little more clunky. Um, that's when I change it or earlier. Like if I'm going on a trip and I know I'll get past 3,500 miles on that trip, well then I'll just change it early. Um, you know, like the long trip I took Palms, Pines and Fishing Lines. Uh, I don't believe I was due for an oil change right before that. Changed it anyways. Start out fresh, right? The other thing I will say is, hey, there's more to a good oil than you put it in, your bike didn't break down over 80,000 miles, and you felt like the shifting was good, right? Like that's not very exacting um, metrics around performance of a lubricating oil. Well, so let's talk about maybe more exact metrics. Those of you who follow my channel will know that roughly every 10 to 15,000 miles, I do an updated review of my bike. So I've done a 50,000 mile review, I did a 60,000 mile review, and before I took the trip across country, I did a 70,000 mile review. I'm about to do another one soon, uh, over 80, I'll probably push it to 85,000 because that's really when I'm gonna need a, a valve tap at clearance adjustment and some new spark plugs, but, um, and I like to do those things when I'm in there. When I do these reviews, and if you're interested in watching these reviews, you know, here's one of them, and I'll put down below in the description uh, the other reviews. There's three of them so far, but I take the bike apart. I take exacting measurements of uh, valve wear, and I report on how much valve train wear I'm experiencing as far as tappet clearance is concerned and what kinds of shims I've had to put in. Here's the caveat, not many. Um, one up to this point. No, one and then another one before the trip. So after 80,000 miles, I've replaced two shims. That's like nearly nowhere whatsoever in valve train. And then the other thing I do every time I do these reviews is compression. And my engine compression just continues to be fantastic. So, you know, what more can I say about it other than taking the engine apart and you know, pulling like the crankshaft, uh, pulling connecting rods off the crankshaft and measuring the clearances in there, uh, or maybe around the journals of the camshafts. No, I haven't done those types of measurements, but the measurements I have done are telling me this engine is in great shape after 80,000 miles. Um, so check out those reviews, and uh, I'm gonna have breakfast here and then I'll ride back to the shop and I'll finish up this review. One thing I'll say about rubies, and this has nothing to do with motor oil, but Rodney, I know you're watching Basted Eggs. Those of you who order your eggs basted know that there are very few places that actually can get them right. Rubies gets them right every time. Okay, so back in the shop. Um, Rotella, right? So this is the stuff. This is the jug I buy. And on the back, here's your rating, and then a whole bunch of other ratings. And in here is Jasso MA2, which I mentioned previously is what I hone in on. Um, is this conventional oil? It doesn't say that it's synthetic or that it is a synthetic blend, but I went on bobstheoilguy.com, and you know, this is a site where. Well, you find some well thought out reasoning around oils and uh, there's some reasonable research done. There are some phone calls made to manufacturers and the consensus there is that somewhere in 2021, Shell began putting a blend of synthetic oil into this. And so it isn't, to my understanding, and I'm not the expert here, but according to bobstheoilguy.com, this is actually a synthetic blend now, um, and a pretty darn good one. If you look closely at the rating, this is rated for CK, um, which is far above the SJ and SN and S whatevers that we tend to find with uh, motorcycle service manual ratings for the motor oil that you should use in your bike. 
um, let's just put it this way, it exceeds it. After 80,000 miles of running this oil, I'm still riding my bike. I still have yet to replace the clutch. Oh, and I should mention, uh, when you're looking at motor oils, in that same rating circle, if you see the words energy conserving or something down in the bottom half semicircle of this circular badge, don't put it in a wet clutch motorcycle. Uh, the wonderful thing about Rotella is it does not have those uh, friction reducing additives that would be bad for your wet clutch. So another reason why it's a good candidate for uh, motorcycles with wet clutches like mine. I have not replaced my clutch yet after 80,000 miles. It's still the original clutch plates. Um, there's quite a bit on this V-Strom that I have not replaced. Other than fluids and tires and brakes and chains, I haven't put anything into this bike. Um, and it continues to serve me well. And Shell Rotella T4 continues to serve me well. If you look at another motor oil that is meant for cars, which do not have wet clutches, uh, you will see that energy conserving uh, moniker in that badge. Avoid this in motorcycles with wet clutches. Not all motorcycles have wet clutches, which is why I'm specifically saying that. Um, pretty rare though nowadays uh, to find a motorcycle with a dry clutch, uh, some BMWs. There you go. Might be others that I'm not thinking of. So, hey, you know, that's my review of Shell Rotella T4, cheap motor oil, used long term and used exclusively. Um, and I honestly, I mean, I'm telling you, like I set out from the beginning when I bought this bike to not use any other oil because I just wanted to prove, I mean, I grew up as we all have with people saying, nope, you got to use this oil and people put their flag in the sand and they're really firm about it. And it just didn't make sense to me. So I thought, all right, I'm going to put my bike at risk and I'm going to stick to this and stick to it long term. I have done that, I promise you, there has never been a drop of any other oil in this bike, except for that first 2300 miles, I don't know what was in it. Um, the only scenario I can think that would be better is if I bought an absolutely brand new bike, and even in that case, uh, the manufacturer is gonna have put something else in there for that first uh, break-in period. So. You know, this bike did not go far beyond that break-in period from the manufacturer with question mark oil in it. And beyond that, it has always been Shell Rotella T4, nothing else, 82,000 miles on it now, running like a champ, measurements, metrics, all looking thumbs up, and there you go. I'm just going to let that speak for itself. I hope that you found that this review was useful. Um, if you are interested in learning more about me and my motorcycle journey, uh, there's a lot you can find here on Urban Monk TV. There is a complete and detailed Cafe Racer build of a 1978 GS550. I mean, every nut and bolt, guys. So if you want to learn motorcycle mechanics, and how to rebuild an engine and strip a bike down to an empty frame and all parts off of it, build it up as a custom, or just put a motorcycle together, uh, it's here. And if you wanna read my book, Creating Mr. Corton, uh, it is available on urbanmonktv.com. There's a lot about uh, how I shop for motorcycles, how I fell in love with motorcycles, uh, it's just a good read for people that like motorcycling, and uh, so that's available. Other than that, I appreciate you watching. Oh, if you want Phaedrus Was Here stickers, reach out to me through the contact form in uh, urbanmonktv.com. I will respond eventually. I'm not there every single day checking those emails, but I, I get it done. Hey, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you would like to become an urban monk. Thanks for watching.